It all started when Riccio, injured from the team's rough initial hours of being stranded and lost, was given strange iwi healing medicine to drink, which he soon developed what seemed to be an addiction to the strange concoction. This all accumulated when the team entered one of the native temples that are scattered throughout the ancient island. Here Riccio started to experience radical changes within his mind. It was almost like he was given a vision to the island's ancient past. Not thousands, but millions of years before they ever set foot on the island. What he saw was a great battle of beasts. No, titans. Kong wasn't always alone. There was an entire tribe, a family. This place was home to Kong's entire species. It was their paradise until the skull crawlers came. They laid waste to everything. <laughs> Soon it all ends, and some time passes before the next vision into the past would occur. When it did, it was when the group stumbled upon an old shipwreck that must have been there for hundreds of years by the look of it. Inside lay another one of the island's mysterious ritual paintings. By the time the Iwi arrived in Skull Island, the crawlers had slaughtered all of the Kongs. All but two of them. The strongest. Kong's parents were king and queen of Skull Island and they fought to the very end. All the other members of Kong's family lay dead, killed by the overwhelming onslaught of skull crawlers. Fast forward to the third issue of the series, and the crew manages to discover the same boneyard that we see in the Skull Island film. Laying in the middle of the boneyard was the remains of two gigantic ape-like creatures, all that remained of Kong's parents. Before the group could really comprehend what they were seeing, skull crawlers attacked the group and forced the outmatched humans into a nearby small hole. What they didn't know is that this hole led to what was once the den of Kong and his family, the location that was going to be his nursery, his home. This sends Rikyo on yet another trip into the past, and this time we get to see the great end of Kong's parents. I can see the birth of Kong, this place, the boneyard. It was the home of the Kong super species, the last place to fall to the skull crawlers. And the two apes the Iwi saw on their arrival, the lone survivors, Kong's father and his extremely pregnant mother. By the time Kong was conceived, things were long past hopeless. But still, his mother and father fought, and they fought right up until the birth of their one and only child. Kong was born in battle, blood, thunder, fire, and death. Kong's first images, his first impressions of this world. He only knew his mother for an instant, one instant in her arms, all he had for the rest of his life. His mother, she knew what to do, while his father held off the crawlers. She sealed him up here, in this cave, where they couldn't get to him. And then the baby Kong watched, watched as the crawlers slaughtered his mother. <laughs> The hatred, the rage, the fury kindled inside him that day is the source of his strength. It makes him invincible. What could Kong do after all, when it was all over? He was the last of his kind. What could he do but weep by his dead mother and father? And so he did. He wept although there was no one there to hear him. This whole story may make you look differently at the monster vs. Kong. Imagine how he must feel as a sentient being, capable of understanding that he is the last of his kind, remembering how the very first thing he saw in life was his parents being slaughtered.